Greetings and salutations to our fine podcast audience. Welcome to episode 155. We made it. We got all the way to the end of January. Here we are. Well, it's not quite the end of January. Almost. 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 We got one more week. We do. Um, So, this week, uh, we have a question posed to us about the evil thoughts that take place inside of our brains. And I thought it would be interesting... You deal with evil thoughts, Ed? I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Care to share any of those with us? I uh, don't have as many as I used to oh, that are in the good. same direction. That's good. Uh, but, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I've had lots yeah. of thoughts Nathan, about it. you're pretty evil sure. on the yeah. inside. Okay. Just want to establish that before I ask mm, the question. I do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, we have, I think we all have a fair amount of experience with Are most thoughts. of your all's thoughts around killing people? <laughs> we might not ought to record this one. I did say those were mine. I was oh, asking you if those were uh, yours. I thought this was confession I, didn't, I did not say I, thought I Ed, had most thoughts. I thought Ed was confessing I did not right say there. I had most thoughts oh, about okay. killing people. Wow. No, then no, you need I to, do not. You need to work on that in your counseling thing. <laughs> not just assume. Well, I, I just thought maybe. Okay, no. Maybe that Son. says more about my feelings toward Ed. <laughs> I think he's capable of murderous yeah, thoughts. Yeah, that's, well, that might be true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, here's the specific question that this person wants to know. They say, can you help me understand biblical verses that speak to evil thoughts being the same as evil actions? Oh. Such as Matthew 5.21, which is the verse where Jesus says, uh, you've heard it said, don't murder But I say anyone who is angry with a brother or sister is subject to judgment. My mind, this is back to the question, my mind sometimes goes to very dark places. How can those thoughts be the same as carrying out the actions? So let's deal with the first, the assumption that the person makes. Because I hear an assumption in here Mm -hmm. that evil thoughts are on the same plane with evil action. Is that biblical? Depends on what you mean, I guess, because Jesus, because all I would say is when you say, are evil thoughts the same as evil actions? No, and I don't think that's what Jesus is trying to say mm-hmm. either. Right. I think what Jesus is getting at with that particular verse that you reference, and then I would also say with the following teaching on lust mm. being the same thing, is Jesus it realizes that the root of all evil that is done uh, it begins in the human heart, begins in the human um, psyche, and there is a way in which we have separated mm. the things that I do to people and the way that I think about people, the way I imagine situations, the desires that are in my heart, and we naturally say the action is the only bad thing mm. and this that is going on internally is not bad. To say that they're the same, I don't, I don't know because that... It, that word same feels a little blunt to me. Obviously, the consequences are different. You know, if I if I think of killing someone and then I actually kill them, then there are different consequences that take place. Mm-hmm. But is the sin the same? I think that's what Jesus is getting at. The evil that is within me is the same. Now, there's also, I don't know, that, that I'll start there because I think there are <laughs> levels to then yeah. how many sins does it take for me? How many evil thoughts does it take to go beyond the initial evil? Wow, you make me so angry I could kill you. Mm-hmm. To now, I'm going to plot it. Now, I'm going to make mm-hmm. decisions around it. Now, I'm going to pick up a weapon. You know, like all of those things. Those are multiple thoughts and decisions. And that may be too philosophical to get into what you want to talk about. Yeah. But to answer your original question, I don't mm-hmm. think Jesus is trying to say same in the sense that it sounds like the questioner is asking. Yeah, I don't think so either. And it reminded me of uh, the James chapter one when he describes there is a progression involved. When, sure. when sin comes into the picture and he talks about you've got these evil desires, which then when you entertain those gives birth. You can go read this in James chapter one, but he basically right. just says you have these evil desires. They give birth to uh, these thoughts and then you let them play out into sinful actions. And then he says, then sin, when it gives birth and is fully matured, leads to death. Yeah. So then he, he connects, but he's not saying that thought equals death. Right. He's actually trying to, and which is back to your point, what I think Jesus was trying to do is he was trying to help keep us from separating actions and uh, thoughts, but he was trying to show us the progression that they lead to, not necessarily 
equate them, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know, you're, you bring up James. So, you know, James goes back to that same thought, I think, in James 4, where he says, where do wars and all of that begin? Mm -hmm. Right. And they come from the evil desires within you. you. He's not saying that having an evil desire inside of you is going to start a war, but he says there's never been a war that started that didn't start with the desire. Exactly. And, you know, it's interesting. We just, in our elder group, we do Bible study, and we finish the book of James, and one of our elder who leads that had pointed out that one of the things he'd studied that a lot of people believe James, and I had never heard this nor thought of it, that James is simply teaching through the Sermon on the Mount in his own way. Mm. It's a different way of talking through his brother's teaching of the Sermon on the Mount, and that he comes back to it in different through yeah. the chapters. That's awesome. Well, you but, can certainly see that. Yeah, yeah, I could. As I soon as he brought it. it up, I go, oh, I see that. Yeah. Absolutely. So James is saying the same thing in the first chapter. He says again the third chapter. Does. Well, and I think in particular to talk about the difference, and I, I think this may be getting, once again, too philosophical to what the person means, but there is a difference between um, a, a passive thought and an active thought. Jesus is not talking about the passive thoughts that come into my head. So mm -hmm. we know that there is temptation that one comes from my own desires, but there also is temptation that the yeah. evil one brings me. There's temptation that just happens because I see it. And so mm -hmm. I think, for example, Jesus, and I think it's Dallas Willard I heard who first said this about the verse where Jesus says, when, if you choose to look upon a woman mm -hmm. with lust in your heart, what he's not saying is, if I happen to see a woman, see a woman yeah who has that the uh, something about the original language upon look upon means when I make a choice to look at this person with lust. Mm -hmm. And so I think about in my own life, uh, there are thoughts now, as I've talked about here before, I was addicted to pornography for years. There are images and thoughts that pop into my head passively. I, I did not sit and think, oh, I really want to think about this now. They pop into my head. The sinful part of me is the part that then goes, Let's slow down and kind of stay sit here for a minute. Let's sit there for a second. Let's yeah, think about, about this. Let's and, and, and it's not a physically looking upon, but it is a mental, let me look upon this with the intention of lust, right? When I'm scrolling through uh, Instagram or Facebook and a lustful image comes up, it's not, that was not <laughs> the problem. It's the problem when I then go, well, let me pause. Or it's the option when I go, I used to say to people, when I go over to that little search bar on Instagram, nothing good happens. Mm -hmm. When I decide I'm going to go, when I decide, let me click that search tab, nothing good comes out of that, right? Or the decision, there are a lot, and this, I don't want to keep going down these yeah, rabbit yeah. holes, but it's the second thought. It's not and this is what Jesus when he means angry. It is not when I feel anger. It is when I choose to be angry. Yeah. Anger is a proper response in some circumstances mm -hmm. when evil and injustice happens. But what Jesus is talking about is that anger is something to be removed immediately. Yes. Yeah, I need so, to deal with it. That's right. That when I am angry at a person for what they have done to me, that may be the appropriate response. Maybe they wounded me. Maybe they said something. Maybe they continue in patterns that are harmful to me. Maybe I see injustice in the world, and it makes me angry, and that is the proper response. What, what Jesus is talking about is not necessarily anger in the emotional sense. He's talking about contempt. He is talking about the decision to look at a person made in the image of God and to say, I have now decided you are not the object of love. You are the object of wrath. Yep. You are the object of my anger, my judgment. It wouldn't my matter contempt. to me if you were dead. You effectively are saying that, mm -hmm. uh, that in my heart, I wish bad things on you. I don't want to be the one to kill you. Mm -hmm. And I remember Dallas saying this in a, in a talk that I heard one time. He said, most of us, the reason you haven't killed someone is you did not have the opportunity. <laughs> he said, because, and I'm not saying that you couldn't have, but you knew you'd get caught. That he said, there are all of us at some point have, he goes, we don't want to admit it to ourselves. But if I thought I could, no one would ever know, and there would never be a consequence, there has been some point in my life that I could have taken a life. Mm -hmm. And his point is, that's what Jesus is trying to rid from me. Yep. That I would become the kind of person that in no situation would I think the right solution here is for me to end Well, existence. and I'll say that, so when we talk about are they the same, they come from the same root, which leads to the same breaking. Sin is uh, sin is what ultimately begins to separate me from God. And so the thought that I have that's an ungodly thought is the first step toward me mm -hmm. being 
down the road. I have to either take that thought captive and deal with it. So you're, what do I do with these evil thoughts? You do what Paul says. I take the thought, I hold it up, and I go, that thought is not taking me anywhere good. So I'm going to take that and toss it away. And I'm going to, the only way I know to deal with it is I replace it. And I, so I have, and we talked about this several years ago, and I've talked about it again and again. We've all talked about this. I have struggled with anger. I've also struggled with lust. I, you know, I've struggled with the things you just said about your words coming out, and then you go, oh, that, I need to get that word right. back. Uh, all of those things, when it came to anger, the best thing for being angry with people is when I have it, and it's going to come out, and I go, Dah. I have to go, and I go, that person's made in the image of God. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's a person created in the image of God who is deeply loved by the same person who loves me. Yeah. And in the moment, do my feelings immediately go away? No, but boy, they don't last as long as they used to. No. And so person committed that made in the image of God, who is deeply loved by God, that's how I deal with that thought. And it ultimately was the way I began to deal with lust. Uh, for when I would walk around and be on a lust search where, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was uh, in target-rich environments mm-hmm. and I was just looking for something to long, I'd go, person made in the image of God, deeply loved by him, that's not the way I should be, you know. Yes. Yeah. And, and I wanted to address this, too, because I sensed this in the question as I was reading it. Um I sense that maybe, and I could be wrong, but maybe there's a little bit of you are condemning yourself for these mm-hmm. evil thoughts. And um, I just I just want to say to you that I hope what you're hearing and what we're saying is that there is you are not being condemned simply through the thoughts that you are uh, thinking. Um, in fact, I, I thought this was great. When you say my mind sometimes goes to very dark places, great. I'm glad you recognize that. Right. Because if you didn't recognize that, then we would have an issue. Yeah. I think then you'd be having real bad problems because you recognizing, and Ed's already mentioned this about taking thoughts captive. The way I often say it to uh, clients is, uh, you know, you the human being is the only creature on earth that can think about his, his or her thoughts. Right. And what you are doing by saying that right there, just making that observation, is you are thinking about your thoughts. And right. that it's that image of Ed just said, taking it out, looking at it, deciding what it is, and then deciding if you're going to hold on to it, nurse or it, flick it, it away, or just throw it away, or replace it, however that works for you. The, the process that you're going through in doing that is the redemptive process. <laughs> it is a Christ in you. That is spirit-led right there. And so if you are at, currently being able to do that, there is no condemnation. Okay, for the evil thoughts that are flicking through your head or just coming across your thought patterns as long as you are recognizing and doing that. Back to what you said, though. If not, if you have, if you do take those evil thoughts and, and hold on to them, nurse them, you know, work them out in ways that would be destructive to you and other people, then that's where the problem comes in. And justify them in all kinds of yes. things. I, I've known lots of, and because we're all men, mm-hmm. I assume this is the same for women, but I haven't had many of these conversations with women. On the lust side, I've heard many young men say, well, this is the way God made us. God made us to be attracted to women. Right. They are beautiful to look at, and I can't help myself. Mm. You have already decided yes. to disagree with God. That's right. right. And so you've taken the thought, you did examine it, and go, this is a really good thought to hold on to. And so... Or you've just given up. Well, yeah, one or the other. One or the other. And it's leading you to a place that you're going to regret at some point. You will regret having held on to that thought. There isn't any condemnation. I'll also, you know, there there isn't any condemnation for the thought. I also want to be really clear, if you've gone all the way to <laughs> let lust take it to its full action, yep. those aren't condemning... All, everything is available to be forgiven by God. That's right. Mm-hmm. But you have to look at it. You have to own it for what it is. Mm-hmm. You have to deal with it. And, you know, you can. Yes. You can. Well, and I think, so to, to, to offer some help, because this ends up being the conversations I end up having with lots of people, is how do I handle my thoughts? I don't think, I think the biggest problem spiritually that we have is mindlessness. 
What I mean is we are not mindful. And a lot of people think, well, I'm never mindless because I have all these anxious thoughts in my head or I have all these self-condemning thoughts in my head or I have all these lustful or angry thoughts in my head. Mindless is just the choice to not choose what I think upon. It is to allow my mind mm -hmm. to just run to whatever it is. And some of us naturally run to anxiety and some mm -hmm. of us naturally run to self-condemnation or to anger or to lust. And what I have found is in my own personal uh, just discipleship to Jesus to that the first area I work on is my mindfulness that I'm trying more and more to uh, become aware of God's presence with me, to become aware of how near God is to me. I heard a um, priest at one point say that he he said, you know, every every emotion is a is an opportunity for prayer. And then he just started listing anger and lust, and uh, he goes greed. And I thought, what is he? What? I thought he was going to say sadness and happiness. Mm -hmm. And he started naming these other things. He goes, every time you lust is a time for you to talk to God. Every time you're angry is a time for you to talk to God. Every time you have the thought. And so what I started doing was whenever I'm out and about and I see a woman and I can feel my mind going that direction, the first thing I do is I say, uh, Father, I know that is your daughter. I pray that she has uh, I pray that only good things come in. I hope that her, if she has a spouse, that their marriage is good. I go, see, I go down this rabbit hole of blessing this person That's great. because the nature of lust and anger is to dehumanize a person. Even anger, we think mm -hmm. of it in, in lust, but anger is the same way. It's a dehumanize to an object that I have control over. Yep. And to choose to start praying, I also have tried in my life to start memorizing large chunks of scripture. Then so, cause, so that way when I'm mindless, I go, well, I know I want to get on my phone and just go on these things. And because of, I've already mentioned, pornography has been a problem for me. I have lots of safeguards on my phone. I have entire social media apps I don't even have anymore uh, because it just, I realized when I'm mindless on those, only bad things come from it. And so when I want, when I'm, you know, all of us, I think are a little, uh, our attention spans are lower because all of us are watching TV and on my phone mm -hmm. and reading a book and doing something. Mm -hmm. I go, let me slow down and try and quote some scripture to myself before the thoughts come. And that's the point I was trying to get to is we are, we've given a lot of advice on what do you do when the thought comes. Mm. Often the thoughts are coming because I am mindless, that's because sure. I have that's left the empty sure. space yeah. in my head. You know, and once again, I mentioned the Psalms on the last one, but over and over again, uh, David and the writers of the Psalms say, I meditate on your law day and night. But when I wake up in the morning, when I go to sleep, and obviously it's not a command of how you have to start and end your day necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's the idea that throughout my day, when, when I have downtime, all I'm thinking about is God. And there's a way to, to do that on your own that these thoughts don't even have necessarily the space to come in, at least at the frequency. Because, you know, I, I heard the same thing you did, Jason, and I know there have been periods in my life where it felt impossible not to think That's upon right. the thought Me because too. the frequency that they were coming into my head. Mm -hmm. And I would say over the years, uh, certainly lust, I mean, I've already mentioned lust and all of that is, is still sh a, sh a struggle at times, but the frequency has become so much smaller as I've walked with Jesus and as I have... Uh, I, I never want to say that in such a way that someone goes, well, there will become a day that I'll never even have a lustful mm. thought. I, I st it is still a struggle for me. I have to be active about it. I have to be on my guard all the time. Uh, but that is not a sign, as I've learned, uh, of immaturity. At one point in my life, I thought, well, one day I'm not going to have to have these safeguards on my phone. And one day I'm not going to have to have this. It is in that weakness of knowing where I need to be mindful, where I need to have that you may always have to have safeguards on your thoughts. But that, as we said a couple of episodes ago, that is the dependence on God. Yeah. It is the, I will not get to a point where these thoughts won't be a struggle if I don't allow myself to. Yeah. I have to make the choice. That's right. Good point to end on. All right. So if, uh, if you want more detail, send us another question. But yes. if you have another question that's burning in your brain and you have the thought and you just can't get rid of it, Sit, click that link in the description to send it to us, and we will deal with it. Speaking of questions, uh, we have one coming up next week. Um, I've never quite heard someone ask it quite this way, but they want to know, if Jesus was, a, was Jewish, why aren't we all just Jewish? So we're going to talk right. about that.
Y'all ready. ready for that next week? I think I so. Guess. All right, well, well, y'all come back next week, and we will talk about why are we not all just Jews. Okay. All right. So have a great week, and we will see you next time on the podcast.